Hey everybody, Coach Toolshed here, and today I'm going to be bringing you my weekly roundup of stuff that Bethesda continues to get wrong, because once again, they can't go another week without some problems arising. I asked the question last week, can they go an entire week without a PR debacle? Well, they maybe haven't hit the, the heights that they had last week with the whole data leak, but they have some new stuff this week. Some of the stuff is pretty trivial, I will admit, and some of the stuff is much more important, revolving once again Bethesda getting themselves into some potential legal issues. How do they keep how do they keep doing this? I don't know. But it just seems that they continue to just make every possible bad decision and I just don't understand what they're doing. I including this. I turned on the game after the update the other day. I tried to go into my pause menu and I was baffled by this. It, a notification trying to send me into their atomic shop to spend money to get a player icon because of course they don't have enough people playing the game they don't have enough people purchasing these in-game items so now they're desperate so now when you turn the game on if you haven't played it since the update as soon as you hit the pause menu to go into your map which you might need to do in a hurry because this is a live service game and you can be attacked at any time so you might need to be in and out of your menu quickly no instead they're trying to they're trying to force you to spend more money on this game because of course the price cuts for the new people that they're trying to seduce aren't aren't going to supplement them the way they thought they were going to be supplemented for this game so they're just trying desperately to get you into this microtransaction store and we're going to be getting into that right now so the data miners got into the code this week and started fiddling around looking around at the individual lines of code and what they found was something that was not surprising at all to me but seems to be surprising a good amount of people especially people that have been defending this game and bethesda all along and i saw a bunch of videos about this this week and this is not anything that was a shock to me but what did they find well what they found is evidence of incoming loot boxes in the form of fallout's lunch boxes and it looks like the items that are going to be available inside these lunch boxes are going to be stuff like damage boosters and carry weight boosters and hunger boosters and XP boosters. Wow. It almost is like I predicted that several months ago and people told me I was insane. People told me Bethesda would never do that. People told me that Bethesda wouldn't be stupid enough to put it in the game after they said that they specifically wouldn't. They, they said that the only stuff available in the cosmetic shop would be cosmetic items. But no. Now we have these lines of code. And the lines of code have been updated in the latest patch to indicate that they are, in fact, due to come out at some point in the atomic shop. They have the same prefix in the line of code as all the other items that are in the atomic shop. And the lines have all been updated in the last patch notes which means that something they these are not just dormant lines of code that were in there from a long time ago this is stuff that just got worked on within the last week or so so i still and i still see some people saying well just because if they change the code doesn't mean they're coming yeah it doesn't necessarily mean that they're ever going to be activated you're correct but it's in the code xp boosters damage boosters carry weight boosters all of the stuff this is not cosmetic it's not cosmetic and i see some people saying well what's the big deal it's just a temporary booster the big deal is a couple of things one is that it would be if they put these in the game that's another example of them lying directly to our faces and i see a lot of people saying there i already see people defending them anyway which is crazy to me it's crazy that some of these guys are still defending it like even though the lines of code have been changed and even though they have the exact same the prefixes as all the other stuff in the atomic shop people are still trying to be like oh no -uh, no -uh. it's crazy you guys you guys when will you wake up to reality bethesda lies all the time if <laughs> I, I told you I, I thought for sure we would see XP boosters at the least before the end of next year. And now it looks like they're going to be coming maybe any day now. Who knows? They could activate these at any time because it's in the code right now. So these, these are just sitting there waiting to be activated as we speak. So we'll see how that plays out. But don't be surprised if you see XP boosters. 
because Bethesda's got to recoup some profit here. They got to get some of that cash. Sales are down, way down. And nothing in that, the Atomic Shop is not really designed to entice people. There's nothing in there that's like, oh, I got to have that. I don't see people like dying to buy anything in that store. So the microtransactions are probably dying on the vine with the low player base. And we already know that there's price cuts to the game because they want to get more people in there. And so they're going to be pushing this Atomic Store. And if you have any doubts that they're going to be trying to sell XP boosters, well, the data miners also found some other information which is for a lot of events and different missions, there's been sort of a flat 20 to 25% XP cut across the board for most of the events. So they're just trying to slow you down even more to entice you to buy stuff like XP boosters. So that way you can get your cards faster, unlock your perk cards faster. And this is in fact a pay to win. And I see some people saying, oh no, it's not pay to win, but it actually is because there is PVP involved in this, even though it's mainly a co-op game and there's not a ton of PVP, if they're selling booster packs like this, that's not, first off, it's not cosmetic only, second, it is pay to win, and third, I told you so. Sorry, sorry to sound like an ass, but it's true. I said this months ago and I had everybody jump down my throat. So we'll see what happens. But right now it looks like it's coming as predicted. Next topic. So the next thing I want to talk about is something that is relatively minor in the big scheme of things, but it does show you directly how little care and effort Bethesda continues to put into this game, even though they've already fleeced millions of their customers into buying this game. And even though the overwhelming public reception has been negative towards this game, Bethesda continues to double down on making bad decisions and not putting in the full amount of effort for this game. Now, the reason be behind the, the lack of effort could be the fact that they might just be switching gears. They might already be sort of writing this game off, which I can't really blame them. But you do see sometimes even larger developers will write off games entirely very quickly if they are commercial failures. They might look at the cost projection for continuing to support the game and move on to something else. Look at a game like Battleborn, which just happened last year, and you will see that Gearbox shut that game down very quickly because it just wasn't profitable for them to keep it supporting it. So if Fallout 76 goes down that same road and they can't entice new players, even if they go with huge sales, even maybe a free-to-play model, that microtransaction store isn't really something that's going to keep people investing. I don't think I don't think there's anything in there the way it's currently set up that's going to keep that revenue coming in. So Fallout and Bethesda, they might be looking at this and saying, hey, we shouldn't be putting too much more resources into this. And so what do we get this week? Well, we got the new patch notes. And once again, Bethesda is using the patch notes as more of a marketing tool than actual information. Uh, that's not fair. They did have some more info in this, but they are still using it as a marketing tool right now because they let us know that one of the features that PC players were most requesting is arrived this week, and that is the ultra-wide aspect ratio so people can play in the 21 by 9 aspect ratio on their PC. And Bethesda, in their patch notes, said, now you, you can catch an even wider view from those gorgeous Appalachian vistas. Bethesda, once again, just give some information in your patch notes. Enough with the cutesy stuff. Enough trying with the marketing hype. We're past the point where you guys have the luxury of being cutesy and clever with your information. Just give us the information. At least Pete, Pete Hines has hidden off Twitter for the last month. We're now over a month and Pete Hines hasn't tweeted about Fallout 76. All he's doing is retweeting the Bethesda accounts. So at least Pete Hines has the sense to keep his snarky mouth shut at this point. So maybe the guys in the community doing these patch notes also just we're, we're done with the cleverness from Bethesda and, and the cutesy answers and the smugness. Just some info that's accurate would be great. Thanks, guys. But the real problem with this isn't in the patch notes themselves. The real problem is that once again, Bethesda didn't actually fix this option. They, they didn't put in a proper implementation. All they did, they went in and changed the INI files on the PC, which is something that any competent user can do that understands how to change those files. They didn't do anything that your casual person on PC who knows how to do these files couldn't have done themselves. 
they went in and did another hotfix, which is what they seem to be doing with everything. They're not actually digging into the code itself and fixing these things on a structural level. They're putting band-aids when stitches need to be done. They need to do surgery and they're just like rubbing some ointment on it. This is the problem. They don't take the time to do what needs to be done to fix things properly. And there's many videos you can find online of people using this ultra wide mode and it's broken. There's splits in the screen, there's cracks in the graphics, it's it, the UI is all messed up. Bethesda didn't properly fix it, but yet they're here touting it in their patch notes. Helps you get the beautiful views of the gorgeous Appalachian vistas. Bethesda. This was one of your lead things that you were this is one of the lead things you were talking about in your patch notes for the last couple of weeks. Like, hey, it's coming. Ultra wide, it's coming, guys. And you can't just, you can't even get someone in there to fix it, right? But you guys seem to have no problem slicing XP, fixing exploits. That stuff seems to work great. The XP cuts seem to work great. Those definitely work. But you can't seem to go in there and fix the code properly for some of this other stuff that people have been requesting. This is something that seems minor on the surface. Ultra wide support. Not not necessarily the biggest deal in the world, unless you have a ultra-wide monitor, then it is a big deal for you, but it's not like a pressing issue for every player. But the fact that Bethesda just can't bring themselves to put effort to fix this stuff properly is the real problem here. That's the real problem. It's not the ultra-wide support itself, it's Bethesda's lack of effort. That's the issue. Moving on, next topic. And the next thing to talk about is going to be a quick update from a story we covered a couple weeks ago about the whole canvas bag debacle with the Fallout 76 Collector's Edition. So people who have been approved through the refund process, hopefully these people didn't also have their information leaked online, but the people have gotten started to get their confirmation emails back and Bethesda has let them know that graciously they're going to be getting those canvas bags in four to six Months. 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 <laughs> so I hope everyone in April, May, or June, I hope everyone gets their canvas bags. And I, I'm sure they're going to be really excited when the delivery guy rolls into their driveway in June to deliver a bag that they bought in June the year before. That... what? Way to go, Bethesda. You're telling people it's going to take potentially an entire year to get them the products that they you had opened a pre-order in June. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Way to go, guys. Way to gouge your most loyal players. <laughs> Takes a year. Okay. That's it. I just... I just thought that was some good information to throw out for you guys. Let's move on to the next topic. And the next thing we need to talk about is Bethesda through their website once again is getting themselves into legal issues. Now, the weird thing about this is is that the guy who owns the CEO, the head of Zenimax is a lawyer. And Bethesda themselves are extremely litigious. They take people to court at the drop of a hat. They just actually got through with a lawsuit last week with Google with VR. They like they just were in court, and there's been multiple lawsuits and different court cases we've heard just in the last year, whether it be from suing people for stealing their buggy code. Yes, that's an excuse they actually used in a lawsuit, is that someone else stole their code from Fallout 70 or Fallout Shelter, rather. And the reason that they knew that it was the code was stolen is because it had the same bugs that they couldn't patch in their game because they're incompetent. Yes, they literally try to use that as an excuse. They're like, hey, those are our bugs. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. And then we know that they go after various people. Anyone who uses the name, they, they went after a small company who tried to use the name Scrolls in their name because they said that that was copyright infringement. They went after a small developer who tried to use the name Prey in the title of their game because that was copyright infringement and all this other stuff. And yet Bethesda themselves can't keep, can't seem to keep from exposing themselves to potential legal pitfalls, whether it be for the false advertisements over the bag or the lawyers who are investigating, investigating them 
for a potential class action lawsuit, which I don't think is going to go anywhere. But the fact that they were selling a product under false guises, under false pretenses, that's something that is being looked at. I don't think anything's going to come of that. But here we have something where something might come out of it unless Bethesda fixes it. Because now they're going up against the EU. And the EU government does not mess around like the American government. The EU government takes this stuff a lot more seriously and they move a lot quicker when it comes to companies thumbing their nose at them. We already seen, we already have seen EA get themselves into some trouble with loot boxes over in Europe. And now Bethesda themselves have gotten themselves into a legal issue through their own stupidity. And this is not an error that they made mistakenly. This is something that they did on purpose. This is a design for their website that they screwed up, which is illegal. Now, what am I talking about? Well, basically, it's been discovered that if you have created an account on Bethesda.net, Zenimax has gone ahead and opted you into sharing your email address to, really, whoever they feel like. It's completely unspecified. It just says that they're going to share your email information, and you opt into it. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, Whenever you create a registration for a new account on most websites, they will try to have you opt in to receiving, say, a newsletter or sharing your email address with various other people that they do business with. And what happens is you will often see before you click, I agree to these terms, you will see a couple of checkboxes being like, I wish to subscribe to this. I wish to do that. And sometimes they will have the checkmark on. Now, they're not supposed to have the checkmark on. But sometimes they do, but it's always right there before you click I agree. Now what Zenimax did and Bethesda.net did is when you created an account, they hid those notifications on a separate screen that you cannot opt out of until after you've completed the account registration. And then you have to go into a different submenu, you have to go into your settings, go to your email preferences, which I don't know how many people would actually go into the email preferences setting on Bethesda.net just on a whim. Apparently very few people because it's just now coming out. But if you go to that page, that is where you will find that you have been automatically opted in to sending your email address out to whoever Zenimax feels like sharing it with. Now, why is this a big deal? Well, because this goes directly in the face of European Union law, specifically the General Data Protection Regulation, which went into full effect just a few months ago. It was earlier this year in May. This went into full effect, and that's when you saw some companies already start changing the way they do stuff, start changing the way they set up their registration pages because they have to abide by this. They can't just sign you up for offers or share your information without your knowledge. And this is stated specifically in Article 7, Subsection 3 of the GDPR, as it's known. And it says here, the data subject, that's you, shall have the right to withdraw his or her consent at any time. The withdrawal of consent shall not affect the lawfulness of processing based on consent before its withdrawal. This is the important part here. Prior to giving consent, the data sub subject shall be informed thereof. That's the key line right there. We were not given a chance before, we were not informed before that we were giving consent. They gave consent for us and then expect us to go opt out, which is the exact opposite way that it should be done. And so now if you've created a Bethesda.net account, your information has, your at least your email address has already likely been shared to whoever Zenimax feels like sharing it with. Now, that is a direct violation of EU law. And like I said, the EU does not mess around with this sort of thing. This might fly in the U.S. because our, our government does not crack down on this as hard. They let the corporations do mostly whatever they want. In the EU, they're going to crack down on this. And Bethesda has to fix this once again. And they're going to have to fix it right away. And again, I have to ask, how is a company that is this litigious, a company that has no problems filing lawsuits against anyone, big or small, how do they keep opening themselves up to legal problems like this? There is literally no part of Bethesda that's functioning properly right now. From Zenimax on down to the community leader the community managers, the moderators on Reddit, the P oh, that's the other thing. On Reddit, 
the moderators are deleting all topics discussing this. Yeah, that's right. They're ripping it down saying it's off topic. It, it doesn't concern Fallout 76. So they're deleting it from the Fallout 76 Reddit. That's right. Trying to cover this up. So good job, moderators. Because, of course, why would anyone need to know to go opt out? Zenimax wants to share your info. How dare you try to opt out and how dare you try to talk about it on their subreddit? So they're just deleting people outright, which is just great. It's all great. Just let them keep doing illegal acts. Keep trying to cover up for them. At, at, I mean, it, that's really despicable that you, you are trying to block that sort of conversation from happening when Bethesda themselves is doing something illegal and you are protecting them. That is ridiculous. And not only, even if it wasn't illegal, it's also, it, even still, it's pretty scummy that Bethesda would just share your email address without without giving you that information at up front. The fact that you have to go into submenus to find this is a dirtbag move. And that's what Bethesda is acting like. A bunch of dirtbags. Because I, I, there's no silver lining here anymore, guys. Bethesda is, is making every single wrong move they could possibly make. They do not care about the consumers whatsoever. We are dollar signs to them and nothing more. They are no special company. They're not a special publisher or special developer, like people still seem to try to act like they are. And I know some people say, where do you find these people talking about this, Coach? Uh, go to YouTube comment sections, and you will see them everywhere. They're still there. There's still people swinging the hammer for Bethesda. And it's absurd. Guys, they don't give a care in the world about you. Stop defending them for this nonsense. Period. Just stop. So another week goes by, and now it's time to reset the timer. Reset that timer. Can Bethesda go an entire week without a PR debacle? Can they do it? I asked the question a week ago. The answer apparently is not yet. Because, once again, they didn't do it. So can they, can they go this week? The week before Christmas. Can they go the week before Christmas without a public relations disaster. Let's find out. Now, as I said earlier in the video, maybe nothing here is as important or as high profile as the data leak from last week. That's true. Some of the stuff, like I said, is a little bit, eh, a little bit ticky-tack. I saw some people getting upset that Skyrim has new DLC for missions that they're charging $12 for to do DLC missions for a game that's almost eight years old. But... You know that that's that's kind of minor in the in comparison to all this other stuff going on, but this is a situation where Bethesda just keeps stepping in it. They keep making unforced errors. They're leaking your information out when they're not busy giving it away outright and trying to obfuscate that. I mean, it's just <laughs> they're doing nothing right at all. Anyway, this is the weekly roundup for Fallout. And Bethesda News, it just keeps getting worse. At one point, maybe they'll turn this thing around. But at this point, I have no faith in them doing so whatsoever. Because this is this is, uh, this is is from the top to the bottom. The entire organization just doesn't know what they're doing right now. They're floundering. And it's, it's obvious to anyone who's paying attention. Anyway, that's it for me, Coach Toolshed. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Please subscribe. If you want to stay in tune with the channel, head forward, and as always, keep it turned to 11.